Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am hoping that I am live right now, and if you uh, are catching this, if you could give me a comment or uh, let me know a little bit that you are here, then I will have a better feeling that this is working okay. I'm a little rusty, I think. I haven't been doing my lives as much lately, and I am going to be getting back in the saddle here and trying to do the every Thursday at 8 o'clock, and I'm going to be bringing some t more tutorials and some old product ideas and techniques, that kind of thing, to do with you. And um, this is kind of something we can do uh, as a community of people who would like to create things. We uh, get ideas from one another, and we try different uh, products and different techniques, and we can just kind of interact with one another and grow that community of like-minded people who like to... Um, do things for others by using your creativity. So that's kind of uh, where I have come in with Keep In Touch Crafts and kind of why I am starting up this little uh, gig, I guess, this this fun, because I just love to create uh, and make cards and make um, all kinds of goodies and um, learn. I love to learn, and I think that's a, a big part of it is wanting to learn and keep learning new skills and keep trying new things so that I can improve and um, and just get better. And, and it's just such a therapeutic, uh, creative process that I've really found here in this community and would love others to join as well. So it looks like we may have a few people showing, at least maybe one person giving me a thumbs up, up that they're here. So I am hopeful that this is working okay. Um, if there's any issues, let me know if you could. Um, and I'm supposed to be getting the comments and that kind of thing. So if somebody is uh, here and notice any issues, feel free to type a comment. If you're signed into YouTube already on your YouTube account, then it'll show me your name. If you're not, it, um, it may just show that you're just a, a YouTube user. So that's um, one thing to keep in mind. So welcome, and uh, I am getting ready here to show you some new things. We have um, kind of the end of one year, beginning of a new year, starting here with, um, I use all the Stampin' Up! products. Uh, I don't know if I said this at the beginning. Teresa Glow, Keep In Touch Crafts. <laughs> I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Thank you for joining me again. So um, I was just getting too excited and tripping over myself because I want to get into what we have going on here. Um, our new catalog for Stampin' Up! products goes live on um, May 3rd, and that's coming up. So that means everything in the annual catalog from the from 21-22 is going to be ending on May 2nd. We do have some good deals. We have some things going on right now that are beneficial. Like if you go to um, Stampin' Up!'s website, and if you look around, there are some good deals to be had. So if there's anything in the old catalog that you have had your eye on and you want to get it before it leaves, you may want to head over to the Stampin' Up! website and um, find those good deals and get those things before they're gone for good. And then May 3rd is when we get to experience all the fun new stuff in our new catalog. Um, if you need a new ca uh, catalog for this upcoming year, let me know. I do. Uh, I am able to send some out to people if you don't have a demonstrator. Um, and a lot of my existing customers, I already have sent out those um, new catalogs. So if you think you should have gotten one and didn't, please let me know because I did order quite a few and get them sent. Um, Stampin' Up! just sends them for me. So I am hoping to get those into the hands of as many people that would have liked that. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is take a look at some of the, the um, things that are going to be coming in. Um, every year with a new annual catalog, we get five new colors. And then that means five colors we're leaving. Um, and so the colors that are considered in colors, um, we have two sets of five. It's kind of confusing. So what that means is every year we get a new set of five colors that... Um, that keeps the collection fresh and current and, um, you know, kind of trendy, I guess, whatever the trends may be, that helps us to stay current that way. And then the colors that came in as new colors two years ago, those are the colors that are going to be going out. So every set of five new in colors stays for two years. So today I'll be showing you the colors that are coming in for 22 to 24. And um, those are staying, like I said, for two years. And so 
the benefit of Stampin' Up! products that I found that is one of my favorite things is that the Stampin' Up! Um, inks, papers, uh, embellishments, all these things coordinate together so they all match. And that can make a huge difference in your crafting and the outcome of your projects. Um, for many years, I was just um, using what I had or what I could find and... Um, it, it was a great way to learn, and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I would get frustrated sometimes because um, my blues didn't match or my colors clashed and that kind of thing, or they wouldn't go very well. So what I love about Stampin' Up! is everything coordinates. If I am going to be uh, using a new designer series paper that just came out, and if it's got kind of a light blue going through it, I know that it's a light blue that I have because it's part of our family of colors. So everything's going to coordinate. Um, for the next two years, these five colors are going to be in a lot of things. We have our regular standard colors that are always here, or they only switch those out every maybe five years or so. Um, and those are like neutrals and brights and, um, oh goodness, there are all these other uh, regals and, um, ah, the light colors are like pastels. Oh, subtles. That's what that is. I shouldn't have put myself on the spot here to remember all of that. Anyways, um, I let me just check a couple a thing or two here. Make sure that we're doing good. Um, let me show you. I'm going to bring up something on my computer here, and I'm going to be able to show it to you here in a second. And I wanted you to see, um, what was it first? I'm going to just kind of get my computer ready so I can show you what I have ready. Um, and it's trying to do a bunch of other stuff. I suppose it won't be ready. Ah, okay. Uh, we have some things going on, a lot of new products coming in. And yeah, I'm not going to find them now. So, uh, unless it's here, it's not. Sorry, guys. Never mind. I'll just go on to my projects. Okay, so let's pull in um, my desktop here. We'll get zoomed in just a little bit more. I'm hoping I have a new ring light. I'm hoping it's brighter now. So you can see it better. Uh, don't want to get anything in the way. Oh, there it is, right in the way. I just want you to be able to see well and that it's nice and bright, but I don't know that it's quite bright enough. Okay. Hello. So this is the new catalog here. Let me grab that. I have mine all like, I have tabs all over it and everything is all marked up here so that, um, sorry for the ring light there, so I can find things because I'm going to have this catalog for a year and I use it a lot. And so I always get mine, uh, the bindery, the bind, binding cut off and a spiral binding and um, clear covers put on it. And it's, um, where did I go, like Office Max or something like that, and it costs like, I don't know, $5 or $6 to do that. And it just makes it easier because then when I open the catalog, it, it just lays flat then. Um, I can't um, open the catalog and film anything yet until May 3rd. So I just want to show you the front here and, um, and let you know that this is the catalog to look for. Do you have it yet? If not, let me know. I'll get that to you, okay? So let's get um, some things. First of all, I want to show you some goodies that I have gotten recently. Um, I had, April's my birthday month, and so uh, people always spoil me with, with things, with cards, because that's what us crafters do. And we always appreciate seeing everybody's work, handiwork. We get inspired by one another. We get ideas. Um, and we love sending cards, so I want to always share those ideas with you in case there's something that you would like to try making. It might just spur the, on that creativity for you. Um, so feel free to, um, you know, screenshot it or come back later and if you want some of these ideas. If possible, I'll try to give you the, um, the artist's name, the creator's name. Um, so this is, uh, I'm just going to kind of try to go through these quickly because... We have a lot to cover here tonight. Um, here is a birthday card, and I have this one is from Maureen Carbone, I think her name is, from our uh, from one of my Stampin' Up! groups that I'm in. She used four different panels, and it's kind of a watercolor, uh, I think it's Horizons paper. 
and then some pretty uh, bling here on the front. So it's kind of a neat layout to keep in mind that you can try just four color or four different size panels and it makes a real interesting look. You could cut it this way first. That's probably a inch and a fourth maybe and then um, spread that apart a little bit and that's how she did that background. Then I have this pretty one is from um, Jeanette. She did a real pretty um, stamp focal point. Sometimes just keeping it simple is a very pretty way to send a card as well. So just kind of a layered foil background. Then um, this is a card from, goodness, uh, let me see here. This is from Rose. Uh, this one is real fun. Um, it's also in my technique stack that I'm going to be showing you in a little bit. I see she uh, just kind of, this is a stencil for the background. She has it kind of going light to dark. And then she has some die cuts on here. She has stamping. She has all kinds of fun stuff going on in this card. And I see that there is some designer series paper here in the background. And it's cut at kind of an angle. And then she carried that over to the inside. And then she has that same paper and stenciling done here on the inside. So I thought that was such a clever idea. Lots of technique here. Thank you, Rose. This is such a pretty card from Robin. And you can see from the top how that one sits. It's a kind of a, it's got a bow here and then it has this little insert part here. It says, let your dream set sail. And um, so then you can write on the back your message to whoever you're giving it to and they can stand it up. And so that is such a fun, um, what a fun card. I think this is a border die and then there's some inking here, just a lot going on. Isn't that pretty? All right, very good, thank you, Robin. And here is another example of a card from Lori, uh, is it Callis? Lori Callis, um, she's in this one of the Stampin' Up! groups that I'm in, and um, what a pretty layout, I love blue. Blue's my favorite color. This blue is an outgoing in color that I was talking about earlier. And um, is that just so beautiful? She did some inking here. She, it, this is a white embossed image, um, heat embossed. So it's kind of a, that raised image. And then she did the coloring on the inside. And she carried over that paper onto the inside as well. Thank you, Lori. Um, and then I have a pretty card here from Trisha. And Trisha Josephs um, used this pretty background paper and a ribbon. Time to celebrate. It's not um, a whole lot going on, but what a beautiful card. I mean, we could do that with our designer series paper. If you just layer that, that extra layer of color here really adds a lot on the white. And um, I don't know, just however she did this, so pretty the way it came out. So thank you, Trisha. Here's our cute little hedgehog. This is from Heather Holbrock. And um, it says, find a friend um, finding a friend is the best discovery of all and that cute little hedgehog there and the little mushroom I just love this um, what a pretty card then this is um, from Joanne and this is some outgoing paper or not outgoing it's um, retired paper that we've used in the past I believe we still have the punch just a card to say hello and then um, this is from Joanne so thank you for that I also have a card now from Coco Villard. Um, this is some of that rainbow paper that we had in our last celebration. Thinking of you on your special day and that pretty bling paper here that, um, oh, I don't remember what it was called, but it's got that nice sparkle to it. She has a great idea of what she puts in a card. She has this um, in, on the inside. It says, I didn't sign this card before I sent it off to you. Instead, it holds a, my warmest thoughts, invisible but true. So if you find you need to brighten someone's day, then take this card and sign it and send it on its way. And so then she has it so that she doesn't sign it. And that way I can use it and send it to someone else. And then this just comes out. And she had her own personal message on there too. So thank you, Coco, for that idea. I love that. Um, I know I do that all the time, but people might not know why, so now that can kind of explain it. And here is a layered card from Reagan. Um, four different designer series paper, and a couple of them are up on dimensionals. 
And then the white layer here on the background is um, embossed with our textiles embossing folder. And then it's all matted and that pretty little ribbon here. This calls for a celebration and hope you have a, the best birthday from Reagan. I want to say, oh, I'm not sure the last name. Sorry, Reagan Moore. This wonderful, beautiful card is from my aunt. And this is so pretty. I love the coloring that she did on here and the marvelous paper. Happy birthday and wishing you happiness. Um, she, we, oh, and she did do the, um, this background right here is from the that embossing folder that makes it look like um, an art gallery piece. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's a really pretty um, background embossing folder. Uh, just a beautiful card. I love that. It's hand. I think she used her blends on that. Thank you, Cindy. All right. Um, now we have one from Marcine Ingram, and this is a fun fold card. It's uh, got a lot of layers you can see from the top, and it's um, display. Each little panel has a different message on it. She's got the brass butterflies in here, um, the tulip paper flowering fields, I think is what it is, and just a pretty, pretty card, a fun fold idea. This one is from Cheryl, and uh, Cheryl, we have, uh, my aunt and I, Cindy and I, we used this as a, um, a, we copied this one, we loved it, we just thought this was such a pretty card. I don't do a lot of black and white, but when I see it like this done, it I just go wow, and then I wanted to make it, so thank you Cheryl Lee for that. Um, this is from from Ashley Carlson, and she made this beautiful card um, with some of the, oh, I'm trying to remember what that paper was, just beautiful. It's got some foil on it, lots of pretty, um, lots of pretty on there, the champagne rhinestones, beautiful ribbon. It just comes together, it's such a striking card. Sometimes it doesn't do it justice on, the, on you know, you watching it on the video. Very pretty. This is from Mary Merrill. Marl, maybe? Pretty banners on here. That little koala stamp. I just love that. Such a cheerful color. Um, really pretty colors here. Now, wow, look at this one. This is so beautiful. I love these colors. This is from Elaine Mitzel. And um, it's a birthday card. This was the flow, I think, called Flowing Flowers. And... Um, this was a tag punch too. Wow, and there's some um, Wink of Stella. Yes, Craig? Oh, sorry, I thought somebody was gonna come visit me, but I guess not. And that beautiful ribbon, and it's so pretty. I love this card. Thank you, Elaine. Um, was it Elaine? I gotta make sure I said the right name. Yes, Elaine Mitzel. Okay. Those are some of the birthday cards. I know I missed some, and if yours was one that I missed, uh, I apologize. I was also part of a swap, and this was a technique swap, and everybody did a different technique. It might be a fun fold. It might have been a special inking technique, that kind of thing. So I wanted to give you a glimpse on those to get you some ideas as well. And this one is from Amanda Martin. She had this um, paper here. Now, it's like a spanning card. It looks reminds me of an H on the front. But, um, wow, isn't that pretty? She used embossing folders here on the side to get that texture in the gray. And this is the I'll never mercury glass paper, I believe it was. It's a graduation card. Uh, this is so cool. You are one of a kind, isn't that? I love that stamp right on the edge there like that. I just thought that was really a nice card. This one could go for a guy or a girl, which is nice too. All right, this next one is a beautiful card from um, Linda Lancaster. What a fun fold is that? Look at all that. So she has the one layer of cardstock is a, um, what did we call that? Oh, goodness, a Z fold. And then she put that on a regular card base, and then that just kind of let it's this way if you're looking sideways, but you have it, it'll stand up on its own. And um, it kind of just adds a lot of interest there. Isn't that pretty? It's the Flowering Fields paper. Happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. 
left and there's some bling on there and then um, normally we just do the Z fold but she also has it open up like a regular card with this cute little duck isn't he cute may your days blossom with joy and happiness oh what a pretty card very springy too all right next one is from crystal kilday beautiful card i love the tone on tone with this misty moonlight blue color that's going out i'm gonna miss it she has the pretty uh flowering background um don't recall the name of the of that uh embossing folder i don't know if you can see that and then the beautiful blue uh stamped images and then i like how she did the ribbon she just kind of took this loop i don't know if you can see that well and it's just tucked underneath so both of these ends you don't have an end you just have these little loops and then it's kind of tucked in the back and then this layer is up on dimensionals and she also did a beautiful flower on the inside love that so pretty here's a technique card from Lori Callies and it's a watercolor technique very another very stunning card um, she has I think this is the watercolor paper and she has a couple of greens I think she just used maybe the blending blender pen let's see if it says no she called it a watercolor technique love that oh so pretty very beautiful here is one for Maria Fredman Friedman sorry Maria Friedman she used um, this is the gingham embossing folder I don't know if you can see that that's an embossed layer in the background I think she inked it first and then embossed it and she's got some a stripe down the middle here of designer series paper that has the gold she also um, punched out with our two different heart punches that in gold uh, foil this calls for a celebration and she's got the octagon cutouts on there as well so she has a lot probably not octagon hexagon I bet and some bling really pretty card this was another fun technique like I wouldn't have thought of this we do belly bands quite a bit on cards especially if there are some that tend to open up so to keep them closed we'll put a little band around it but this this one um, has the kind of a window in it so this pulls off and you can see that it's a band that she made and it's used she used a frame die to cut that out and she, then that left the image to come through on the front be as bold as your lipstick I love that and then um, life is short by the shoes and this is from Linda Lancaster as well and she has some Wicca Stella right there on the um, on the pink of the lipstick so I thought that was really pretty so that shows through and she's got the gems on the bit on this band as well so that is fun I really like how that the uniqueness of this layout I hadn't seen that before and um, I showed you this one already because um, it was a, um, a birthday card that I had gotten from Rose Carey but she also had done this in the swap so you can see that one um, I love that one too um, what a pretty layout and a lot of technique going on in that one now this one is a technique with our waves um, suite of products for, by Kristen Bergren and um, she had done some inking and then um, heat embossed it and then she cut it out with the waves dies so that ha adds some shine and, and that kind of thing onto these waves here and it probably doesn't show on here as well as you can see it in person but you can see that um, embossed part on the paper that she die cut out um, your strength is an inspiration thank you so much Chris Kirsten all right here's a paper piecing um, technique that was done by where are you Michelle Carlson so these were stamped on designer series paper and cut out with the dies for the this set and then she used those on there rather than an inking technique so it is stamped and cut out of our um, some designer series paper the color so that was kind of a fun way of doing it and she used that um, textile embossing folder can you see that just on this part this one doesn't have it and then the matte black dots set that off with this black to really make it pop boy that is pretty such a beautiful card it doesn't have 
a lot going on, but it's really pretty and I, I don't know, it's just very striking. This is a card from, who made this lovely one? Amanda Martin. And this won't show very well for you either on camera, I'm sure, but she had made this. This is um, called Joseph's Coat. I believe it's an embossing technique where you do some stamping and you clear emboss and then whatever is left, you rub like a dark colored ink onto it. It's really hard to explain, but we'll, you know, maybe I'll do that one of these times so you can see what that is. But it's an inking technique and she used um, this foil to kind of set off and the foil was in the designer series paper as well. Very pretty card. Here's a really pastel, uh, Cynthia Howard did this one and it's got that real artsy look to it. I wonder what she did. Does she say, um, I'm going to see if she says what the technique is. She used timeless tulips. Um, she used a, a misting spray bottle. So she probably inked and colored it and put a spray bottle on it or, you know, spritzed it. Um, wow, that is gorgeous. It's like a painting and it kind of bled a little bit, but I think this was the um, watercolor paper. So that's really cool. Here is a, another technique using three different sizes of our round um, nesting dies and you just you cut them out and you kind of stagger them like this and it makes it look like a swish kind of it's just a real pretty geometric looking um, card front our friendship is a thing of beauty and this is by Chris Carlson so pretty I love the foil accents on there as well this is um, a bay is a bay window type card I think it is by Nancy Kubler and she used the um, on the horizon paper which kind of just does its own thing you hardly even have to do anything with that paper and what you do is you take and you tuck this edge under like so and then it stands up like that isn't that pretty oh I love that Easter blessings such a pretty card wow I love it just that little edge here tucks under Here's another Technique card, and this one is from Cynthia Howard. Oh, it's very pretty, kind of that fallish color palette. You, this would be great for a guy, too. Um, it has a, the different colored die cuts here. And then this layer is vellum, and she used an embossing folder on that. So if you just run your vellum through an, with an embossing folder, it kind of makes it look like it's almost white, and it just kind of makes it pop a little bit more. And then she has the other color layers on there as well. And she looks like she did some splatter in there and some of the yellow, um, or the this color of our, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's probably on here. Uh, it was from um, Quiet Meadow Dyes. It was the ombre specialty paper that was this kind of um, gold color with the, that shimmers. All right, Luann Peterson made this beautiful one. I know, I think she did some alcohol ink technique on foil and then punched those out. This is um, kind of some stamping in the background that makes it almost look like that alcohol ink too. Isn't that pretty? Oh, so gorgeous. Wow, oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting that. Really, Luann, this is so beautiful. Oh, wow. Is that a wow card or what? Oh my gosh, this foil is so pretty. I think she did the alcohol ink on it and it's just gorgeous. And then when you close it, you have to be really careful. You can see how those um, die cuts kind of went together and still closed. Wow, that is am amazing. Here's one from Susan Wallen and what a pretty card this is. She did some, besides your stamping, she used white here to do some coloring on there. Here's the inside, and there's the white layers and the scalloped, and she just did a bunch of layers there. Those pearls look really pretty with that as well. And it's she called it a whitewash, and she used white ink and then a blender pen to kind of, kind of move that around a little bit. And the organdy ribbon, very nice. Um, I have a watercolor technique from Lori Callies. Isn't that pretty? She's got all these colors swiped on there and stamped over it with the wishing you the happiest of birthdays. She's got a little banner here. 
really pretty oh such a bold card that bold um, panel here and then that same size that same width along the bottom and with the red oh very pretty here is one from Diane DeWald oh no I'm sorry case from Diane DeWald Meg Martin made this one and this oh is so pretty there's the layers here you don't need to do much with that do you the the colors with the green love that um, it looks like this is right this one right here the this brown is the cinnamon cider color but it looks like it was torn I don't know if you can see in that you can see that but this top edge here was a torn edge so that's kind of an unusual kind of a cool look to that layer wow very nice um, here is one another Luann Peterson one um, using kind of that tone on tone look and then this is another amazing beautiful one on the inside each of these is a little card itself to an incredible woman um, you're absolutely amazing uh, you make me smile and thank you for everything and she put that all on this um, layer here on the inside oh I just thought that was so pretty Hope I'm not cutting off here. You see that? And I think it was actually like this when I clo when she closed it. I've seen some of them too to kind of make them pop like that. They kind of pop open that way. But wow, that is very nice, Luann. And here's another technique. It's kind of a paper folding technique. I thought this was very pretty as well. There's an embossing folder on the background here. Plus, she did the inking and die cutting of the floral image. And so that in itself is stunning. But let alone, it's got this braided edge to it. Um, let's see. So this, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's um, these slits. And then they just all fold down. And they layer in such a way that when you close it, it looks kind of braided. Oh, that is so pretty. I don't know if you can see that there you go wow beautiful are you guys just amazed at the talent in this group of people that I have gotten to know through Stampin Up and um, just a lot of fun a lot of idea sharing and what I've really really enjoyed is that there are a lot of people who help one another we are not it's not a competitive type of atmosphere at all it's more like sharing everybody shares their ideas and that's what I'm doing here for you as well I just wanted you to know if you are interested in the subscription box of paper pumpkin the next month um, you would have to sign up by May 10th if you're interested in, in the May kit um, and that is gonna have all the new colors in it which I was gonna be showing you those the, the five new in colors and then they're going to be giving away these vouchers in there a golden voucher in some of them you could possibly win a $25 little um, gift voucher inside so that's kind of a fun thing I haven't seen them do that before and it's going to have color coordinated products to go with that new in color um, all the new in colors that are going to be starting with our May 3rd calendar um, catalog okay um, let me show you what those colors are because I'm going to be using those and those colors are in what the products that I'm going to be using tonight. So the new colors are Tahitian Tide, kind of a bright, it's totally bright, cheerful blue here. And then they have kind of, this is Orchid Oasis. It is, now it looks blue on my screen there, but it's actually a kind of a purplish it's more purple kind of that orchid color um, then there's another um, starry sky this is kind of like a navy although it's not as dark as night of navy and a little bit more bright than that so there's three of them that are sort of in the bluish family then we have this is parakeet party which is that real bright green and then the last one is called Sweet Sorbet, which is kind of like a red, only it's just really a hard color to sh Let me show you. Here's our real red. Boy, is that a lot alike. Oh, it is lighter than that, though. And Poppy Parade's one we've had for a while. It's not quite as bright as that. 
So it is just kind of a, I don't know, it's called Sweet Sorbet. So those are our colors. <laughs> it's, I can't even do words, you know, the words, I have no words that can convey the colors to you. So you'll have to try them. Um, and so let's get started on our project. I'm going to be using these two probably tonight. And I am going to pull out some goodies that we're going to craft with. All right, so I, here's the stamp set I'm going to be showing tonight. It's called Cup of Tea, and it comes with dies. It is part of the Tea Boutique. I can't even say it. Tea Boutique um, set. Um, it's a suite of products that are going to be in the new catalog, or that are in the new catalog. Uh, this is the paper. It does not really do it justice. There's so much here to choose from, but it does have a lot of those new colors in this paper. Oh, goodness. It's two-sided. It's six by six, and it is, um, let's see, these are the colors that are in this paper. So it's got all the new colors, and it also has crushed curry. So we have these five are the new in colors, and then it also has crushed curry in it. So those are the colors in this designer series paper suite of products that I'm going to be using tonight. And so you can kind of see a little bit better. I've used a lot of these, but um, you can see one side is um, more of the lighter colors. And I believe this is also fresh freesia. So if you happen to have that color, that would work with this tea set as well. There is a couple of greens in there. Um, there's that sweet sorbet. There's some greenery. There's this really pretty um, plaidish type. There's a lot of tea. It's got that tea theme to it. I'd say tea and greenery is kind of what it showcases the most of. Um, but there's a lot of different choices in this paper prep, um, pack that you can do a lot with that. You could do the subtle side of it or the more um, printed side. So they are a um, lot, of, lot of different ways you can go with this set. All right, so we are gonna make some cards here. And um, what I'm gonna use, well, first of all, let me show you this. This is, this is what the stamped, I guess this is the same. I stamped it with my stamp set just to kind of show that but here are what the dies look like so um the dies cut out the greenery and they cut out some of the the teacups there's also so there's a basic teacup cut out and then there's one that's kind of an outline one so you can layer those on top of there um it has these little tags and they look like tea bags so that's really cute the lemon the greenery flowers and hearts and it, this spray, it comes with these um, five flowers that are in the right position that you can stamp it. And I'll be doing that in a little bit. So you'll be able to see how that works. All right. Um, now this is our new pack of paper that every year we put out designer series paper that is two-sided. And it comes in the colors of our color family so you can make those different cards to go that match with our new um, colors or depending on the card bases you use are just a real versatile designer series paper to have on hand. So this year there, the designer series paper pack has this floral on one side and then it has just this kind of a stripe on the other. And then the other, um, each color has these. So that, and then there's the plaid and the polka dots. Okay. Um, and I'm, and you can see that it comes in all the different new colors. Um, and so I am going to be using, you can see the difference from orchid and starry sky. Um, and then the blue is just so nice and bright and the green is so nice and bright. Um, really pretty paper that I know I'll be using this a lot through the next two years as this, um, these colors are, are current for that time. Um, but what else I'm going to use that comes in the suite of products is it does come with some cards and envelopes, some card bases and envelopes. 
which makes our card making super easy. It comes with um, each of the five colors, and these envelopes are already decorated, so it makes it really quick and it's very easy, especially if you haven't done a lot of crafting. You don't have to do a lot to make these beautiful. You could probably even send them as is practically. But those are the envelopes, and they do have little, um, just lots of decorations all over on those. And then these are the card bases, and there are four of each color in here, so there's 20 cards in this pack. And what we're going to do is use these to make our cards. So I have four, uh, four of the colors already done. I'll show you samples of um, after I make this one. But I'm going to make um, this violet orchid, I should say orchid, <laughs> one with you. Um, so... What we're going to do is pull out, I did get some of it ready ahead of time because I know that this video is going to be way too long, but I kind of want to find that happy medium of doing, doing it with you and I just don't want it to be too long either. So I'll see what I can, see what I can manage. Um, so I am using the card base that comes like this and then what we're going to be doing is adding some things to just kind of jazz it up and decorate it. The first thing I'm going to do is I had taken the designer series paper that's six by six and it, it's like this and I did cut it down so this piece is going to actually be on the inside okay so I'm going to adhere one of these panels just to dress up the inside and you'll be able to see in a bit um, that I'm going to be jazzing up the outside, of course, as well. This is more than I probably usually do on the um, inside of my card, but I just didn't want that stark white in there. Um, you'll see it in, in a little bit. I'll show you kind of how it comes together here. So let's get that layer on the inside. And I'm also going to be stamping, and this is going to be there, okay? Then on the front here, I am using, um, now this is what I had already cut off from that side, and I am going to use a layer on the front like so. And it really doesn't matter. I could even just do a little layer like this if I would want, but I'm going to be using a layer like this. So what I decided to do is just make it a little bit deeper, and then I'm going to put it like so. Okay, so this is uh, that Orchid Oasis color, and I used the, uh, the die set, and this die set is called Scallop Contours Die. This is gonna also carrying over from the last annual catalog into the new one. So it comes with these lovely frames that you use all the time. They're a great staple to have in your collection because these types of things you use a lot. So I already did cut out this orchid one, and I cut out two of these, um, two in white, okay? So that was the thing I did ahead of time, so that you wouldn't have to watch me do all of that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is grab my trimmer now, and we're going to do some trimming. All right, so that front layer... Um, I don't know how much you can see if we're zoomed out enough or not. But we are going to uh, cut this designer series paper for the front. I'm going to leave this width. And that width is 2 inches. So it's 2 inches wide. And I'm going to cut it 4 inches. or 2 inches deep by 4 inches. Like so. Okay? So that is going to go on the front. And then this one... I'm going to be stamping, and we're going to layer that on this one. So I do not need this white um, scalloped edge on this. I'm just going to trim that off. And then that's going to leave the, uh, the stitched edging. I could trim it right on the stitched edging. I could um, choose to either leave it on or cut it off. However, you know, whatever you prefer. And I am trying to leave a little bit of that stitching on there. So I am just trimming that, trying to make it so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Oops, I want to leave it on. So I got to make sure it's in the right spot there. OK, 
Okay, I think that's good. All right, and I'm going to keep doing that, cutting off those scallops so that it will layer perfectly onto that um, orchid scalloped uh, piece that I did cut out already. I'm just using this because it's quicker and easier than having to do it, you know, separately. I just die cut two of the white that way. You could even use this for a lot other things too, but I'm not gonna today. And next, I'm gonna be doing some stamping to get our stamping done. So this is gonna be the front. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna uh, stamp and cut out one of the dies or one of the teacups. And I am going to do, uh, let's see, I'm gonna grab my supplies here, guys. Okay, I've decided to do um, this striped looking teacup. And so I am going to bring in a piece of white that is um, on the side here that I, I think I kept it whole. You know, I probably didn't need that. Who knows where I put it. Okay. So we're going to stamp our teacup and um, you could do it in a contrasting color. You could do it in this, you know, the same color that we're doing in this project. So I decided to just go ahead and do it in the, in this one, the Orchid Oasis. And I'm going to just stamp this image and I will be die cutting it out just so you can make sure you can see how that kind of works. So that is quick stamp here. There's our teacup. Uh, I need to clean it off. All right, I use my chamois here that I keep kind of damp and that just works great to clean off your stamps. Um, even the chamois doesn't uh, look nice when you rinse it out and everything, but it's it's very clean, keeps your gets your stamps nice and clean. Now I'm going to be doing the greenery, and this greenery is going to be coming out of the cup. Okay, so I am going to stamp that with our um, the parakeet party. You could also use, um, I found pear pizzazz is another color of ink that we have that works well with um, this designer series paper pack. Okay, and I don't have to be careful. I just stamp that down and I'll be die cutting that out. Whoopsie. All right. Just cleaning it off here. All right, next, what's another thing we need to stamp? I'm going to die cut those. Um, how about our sentiment? Um, we can do, I'm going to use, this is in the stamp set. It says, uh, thank you for your friendship. So I kind of liked that. I'm going to make just kind of a little narrow strip with that. And I'll just be cutting that out. Ooh, that worked good. And then oh, I know I wanted to do a tag. Um, so here is, it's time for tea. Can you see that? Uh, photopolymer is what this is called, these clear stamps on a clear base like this. They're very nice because you can see right where you're stamping. And so it's very helpful to be able to do it that way. Um, I am going to find, oh, here we go. So I had already stamped these little tags. And then I'm going to just stamp a little sentiment on there. Uh, it's time for tea. I don't know if this is straight. I'm not doing it straight on. It's a little high. There we go. That's not bad. And then I'm going to also do um, kind of a two-sided thing here. So I'm going to also stamp a flower on this other one, and you'll see why in a bit. We're going to make a little tea bag out of those. Okay. Now we got to do some die cutting. And I'm not going to put a sentiment on the inside for this right now because I thought... 
it would be good to add that in later, like depending on what you use it for, you might not always know ahead of time what you're going to be doing for your card, you know, what you're using it for. So one thing I'm going to do is get our my little die cutter. This is our little stamp and cut and emboss machine, the small one that we have, and it's super easy to use. It's very portable, um, simple to just keep on your work surface area and uh, just works so well. And um, I like to do a lot of die cutting as long as you use a die that's you know less than three and whatever this is let's see as long as it is under three and a half inches then it'll fit through here if you have large dies those won't work with that one with this but there are a lot of dies it does work with so it's kind of nice so you use um, a sandwich of um, to push through and then it die cuts out your your things that you're using um, where is my green here? I think I set it on top. So I'm going to be cutting out these little, I've got to remember to stay on camera. I'm going to cut out those three. And then I'm also going to be cutting out the other stamped images that we stamped. Now I'm not, actually I'm not doing this one because it was too high. I'm going to do these two. And actually I could just have done them back to back, but I kind of wanted it to be a little thicker. And so that's going to help um, just with the, the sturdiness of what I'm using it for. I am using that to make a little tea bag that we're going to have hanging out of our cup. And uh, if you're afraid this is going to move, you can always, can you see? <laughs> I'm hoping I have this in the right spot. I'm going to just tape it down with some uh, low tack tape just so that I know it won't move. And while we're running it through, we might as well do one of our other shapes um, die cuts as well. So I am going to put the teacup on there. And I'm going to find my tea die. And that's going to go there. This is the outside one, of course. Um, and again, this is some low-tack artist tape. There's a lot of different tapes. You can use washi tape. Lots of different choices to use that you can use. So I'm going to tape this into place so that it doesn't move because um, you usually don't necessarily have to do that. But if I'm going to be on camera, you can bet I would mess it up if I didn't tape it down. So I'm just being careful. And I am going to put that through this die cutting whoa, machine here. Hoping everything has stayed in place. And we'll just crank that through like so. There's one. This came right out. And this one came pops right out. Um, and then I'm going to also do this next one that says it's time for tea. This, these would be good. The reason I'm doing this one first, too, is I thought Mother's Day is right around the corner. So this might be a Mother's Day idea. You could always do a card for a Mother's Day or... Some, you know, maybe you have some spring birthdays or something in your family that you need to make some things for. And so that's, that's why this tea set is a good one for now. Um, now I'm going to cut out the greenery. There is a greenery die just for this. I'm move this a little. I'm going to tape this onto there. Hope you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just lining it up with the stamped image to make sure I have it in the right spot. And I think I might use um, another little piece of this tape. If, if you have a magnetic die base, that works well also. I just don't have that for this. And um, we're hoping to be able to offer that in the near future. We'll see, or maybe the future, whatever happens here um, but we're hoping to be able to get a magnetic base for this so you don't have to tape it as much then usually all right everything's pretty much in place sandwich on that and pull in this little guy again 
and just crank it through. And we're a little wiggly, sorry about that. Gosh, is that all I needed it for? I think so. Here's our greenery. And here is our time for tea. Love that. Okay. For that tea lover in your life, right? All right, I'm gonna pull some of this stuff out of the way so we can get back to creating here. Oh, I do probably need to trim down. There's one more, isn't there? The sentiment um, piece. And I'll figure out where, I'd probably just put it aside. Here we go. I bet it's on this somewhere. Isn't it? I thought it was. It was uh, maybe it's on the T piece? No. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'll just cut this out here. Just with my trimmer, I suppose, will work. Oh, I almost made stuff crash. All right, here's my trimmer. I'm going to just cut this down. You could use a die, too, depending on what you have. But I just want it to be kind of that sentiment strip that's just kind of a narrow one that you can make a little banner out of or whatever. I'm going to chop it right off if I did it there. Don't want to do that. I'm trying to keep it somewhat um, evenly trimmed here. Let's see how does that look. It's okay. Could have made it a little bit um, narrower. But I'm going to just do this to start with. Okay, I'm going to start with about a half of an inch on each end. And then you can do several things. If you have a banner punch, you could use that. Um, I'm going to just try this for today. And that is you snip partially, you know, right in the middle. You make a little cut in. And then that makes the banner end. You just try to keep it even. And I know I'm not doing a very good job. Ah. All right. So thank you for your friendship. We have that little banner there. Maybe yours will be a little neater than mine was. I would probably rather that be a little neater, but uh, we will leave it for now. All right, so we're going to construct our card front. And I'm going to try to find all my pieces here. I'm also going to need uh, my little flower. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it. There is a set of like five and you can stamp them all right on at once. Um, or you can just do it your own way as well. So I'm going to find my card front and we're going to put this together. So let's start with our designer series paper layer and we will put some, I'm going to use liquid adhesive. You could use you know, whatever you prefer for your favorite glue. Um, I suppose I won't have this. There we go. This liquid glue is nice because you can put it down where you want it and then scoot it around just a little bit to adjust. And then it'll grab and then it'll be nice and strong after that. So it kind of gives you that little window of time to do what I'm doing right now. And that's kind of scoot it a little to get it right where you want it. Okay. And then I am going to use, which part do I want on dimensionals? I'll probably put this on dimensionals. So dimensionals are those foam adhesive um, things. <laughs> How's that for words? Okay, where are you foam? Dimensionals, foam adhesive dots. They're an adhesive and they also pop up whatever you're putting them on to kind of give it some more dimension. So we'll put some of those on there. We don't want it to sag in the middle. So you kind of put it like that. That's probably pretty good. And so that will go here. And we're going to put our teacup on there. And we're going to put our greenery on there. Like so. All right, you're kind of getting the idea here. 
um, and then we're also going to add in our sentiment strip and our flowers. So let's go ahead and adhere the teacup part on. And so if I have this about right in the center, I'll put this right here and scoot it around a little. Make sure it's straight and give that a little press. And this part I am going to set it on here and kind of tuck that under that lip of that uh, teacup just a little bit. Oops, it scooted. Okay, and I'm just kind of playing with it a little to get it where I want it. There we go. Good, like so. And I might need a little bit on this little branch thing that's sticking up a little. I can't tell if I got it on there. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to put some flowers on here. I'm going to just do a tone on tone. Um, or I could even use some of the darker color. So let's, I'm going to start with a couple of them from the same color, the orchid. I know it's a little bit of overkill probably with all using the same colors but sometimes tone on tone is really a monochromatic look can really make it um, look nice and if you have stamped once and then you stamp again it's almost like having two different ink colors so that's kind of helpful All right, next I was going to use this darker. Where do I want it now? I don't want. I'm going to kind of stamp this on the edge. Okay, so it's kind of going off a little bit. I'm going to do that over here also. And one of these in the middle, about right there. Okay. Here's our little spray of flowers coming out of our teacup. And close that up before I make a mess. Okay, now I'm going to take and make our little tea bag. <laughs> tea bag, I guess. It's, I'm gonna make it two-sided. And I'm just gonna glue these two together. And that way it's going to kind of dangle and then if it gets flipped over it'll be the little flower will be on one side although I kind of want that it's time for tea to be showing so we got that kind of stuck together and makes it kind of thick and tougher now I'm going to grab my I have a little paper punch uh, I'd rather use my smaller one I have a smaller one somewhere um, well I think Okay, I'll just use this one. It'll be okay. There's room for it. I'm going to make a little hole here, and I will be putting some twine through that and have it hang down here, okay? And I would suggest some... Where is it? Um, you can just kind of use whatever thread or twine you have. Um, actually, I think I'm going to use one thing here I was going to show you. We have in color ribbon, and this one is kind of a metallic, and it's this same orchid color. We do have it in all of the colors. Isn't that pretty? Oh, gorgeous. I love this ribbon. So beautiful. And this coordinates with all those new colors. So let's use this and we will have our little tea bag showing. I think if I can do this on camera, come on. I'm going to pull that through and then I'm just going to make a little knot or a little tie here. It's not going to show. I'm going to have it tuck, tucked in where it won't be showing. Okay. We don't have to worry about it looking all pretty. Now this, you can see where it kind of can fray. 
you, you have to be aware of that, but it also can add a cool dimension when you're using it for some projects where you want that look of kind of a frayed look. So that can really be cool also. I'm going to trim this off. Okay, then we can just adhere this onto our project. Now I have tied them onto the little handle here, but for this one I think I'm just going to sneak it under. I should have not done, I should have done it first, but I'm going to be gluing it under here. The best way that I found is by using um, our glue dots. They work great for ribbon. They're very strong and they just do a really good job with that. So I am going to put this underneath here and just kind of make it go behind it. And then it is going to come down like so. And kind of has that tea bag look a little bit. I'm going to press that in a little more. Not with that tool though. Just going to use something kind of pokey. And try to get that down in there just a little bit more and really press. I'm pressing down so that glue dot really adheres it where I want it. And then we can use either a dimensional or a glue dot to kind of keep that little tea bag where we want it. Um, okay, so I am going to put another glue dot on the back. Oh, jeez of that so we didn't need to even put the flower on there because I'm changing my mind as I go as you can tell all right like so okay I kind of will want to take up some of that excess I feel like it's a little bit too drapey there um, but let's just keep going and adhering this on and we'll center this panel on the front Hopefully this is centerish. All right, and then I'm also going to put dimensionals on the back of this layer. I'll probably use three. One, two, three. I've also seen where people put a little pouch on the inside and have a little tea bag in there, which I love that idea. And so let's get this centered pretty, pretty much in the center. I might have to pull it a little bit. Okay. Thank you for your friendship. And here's of the inside. Um, I didn't put this sentiment on here yet, but we could easily do that anytime. And I'm just putting this panel here. Try to get it about in the center. And then you'd be able to use whatever. Oh, don't want that to happen. If that does ever happen, you know, then you may have glue that shows. And normally, you know, it dries clear. What do you worry about? But it does get, it does dry shiny. So if that happens to you, which it happens to me all the time because I'm not a very tidy crafter, I have lots of little fixes for things like that. So this type of an eraser is perfect for that like just a little very inexpensive uh, gum I think they might call it a rubber pickup or gum eraser that kind of thing and I'm probably getting glue everywhere <laughs> oh goodness okay get all that glue off of there that I don't want showing okay now on the inside, you could decorate it a lot or a little or not at all, however you want it to be. I am going to, um, I think I had already cut out some little die cuts, if I could find them. Oh, here they are. 
Okay. I just have a little tray of them that I've been cutting out to use for um, different projects because I've been using this stamp set a lot. And so you could potentially just use any of these, a couple little flowers. You could use this as a, another little tag that it stamps and cuts out, which is really cute. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of has a greenery look to it. Um, the tags you can use, you can layer those. I am just going to use, I think I might just do, mm, I could do that, but I'm going to stamp. <laughs> Stamping is easy. I'm just going to use the flower stamp, and I'm going to use some of the same colors I used on the front. I kind of go, like, change my mind as I go. I don't know if you guys ever do that. There's three. There's one, two, and three. Okay, little cluster in the corners. I like that. Looks like three different colors, right? But it's not. It's this, I use a starry sky on that one. And so that's pretty much enough, I believe, for the inside and for the outside. The next thing I'm just going to use, they have the in-color matte dots here. Um, and I could use any of these colors to match. Let's find our take your pick tool. These are the best for the, our for the bling here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is add. I want to kind of let those uh, here. Okay, I'm going to try this again. I've heard that if you use this end, you can pick up these with this. Oh, that looked good. That worked. And they do have adhesive already on the back side. Didn't quite get it where I wanted. I'm going to scoot that one a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to put that green center on the flowers. Oops. That seems to work really well. Surprise, I didn't think it would. Oh, perfect. So you kind of press down on the embellishment, kind of slide it to pick it up. Ooh, that works nice. All right, we're getting there. That's probably a little overkill, but um, that's how I roll most of the time. Oh, that is so pretty. I like that really makes those um, flowers pop, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. Then I could put some more colors here and there. Um, if I wanted to use some of the the violet, the blue, any of those would go on here. So I think I actually do want to use, I'm going to use one of the bigger dots. I'm going to put that here. Then I'm going to use two of the smaller. And I never usually use this many on one card, so don't mind me. <laughs> but I just kind of like adding... Uh, that dimension, the, the layers of the dots, you know, that what I'm saying about that, just kind of a little bit more depth to it. Okay. All right, there is our card for today. I will show you my other samples that I made with the other four colors from our in color groups. And it's probably like middle of the night by now. <laughs> Sorry for the length, you guys. Um, so I'm going to get my, oh, I got to show you some stuff, guys. So I need your help on one thing, and then, yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so this is the one that we made together, and that goes in this envelope. And I can see how that looks. Then I used, here's the sample I made using, um, the darker starry sky uh, card base and this one I did those as well on there enjoy on this one happy birthday and then wishing you all the happiness okay I did a little bit of inking around the edges here so it's not as stark um, and that was and some more of those dots all over all right, then I used the blue, the light blue. This one is that Tahitian Tide. And 
what I did was, um, one thing I wanted to show you, if you do make the teacup, if you know how to heat emboss, if you heat emboss the outside of this and um, use clear, then it makes it look shiny like, like a teacup normally would be. So you can kind of see that sheen on there. And then I use the ribbon just here. I did use, make a little, um, um, you know what that is, lemon. And the reason I did that is so it will hold this little corner down. Otherwise, this little card area, this pop-up section wanted to pop up. It wouldn't just lay down because of the layers on this. So that's why I have that lemon on there. And that holds that little corner down of this teacup. And you can see the layer. It's put onto vellum. I just stamped it right on vellum. And then on the inside... I just have it kind of plain on the inside like that. Um, and this, if you use the die, if you take a piece of paper and you have, or the cardstock, and you have it folded in half, then you put the die um, so that it, you put the die on top of your folded paper, but don't let it cut the top. You have it folded off the, or you have the edge of the die off of the edge of the fold so that it won't cut it. And that can give you this, like a little mini card look to it. I'll show that technique again in the future here at some point so you kind of know a little better what I'm talking about. Um, so that is our uh, Tahitian Tide one. And then our green one here is the Parakeet Party. Um, that I did stamp on. We have some in color, um, this kind of shiny paper. I wonder if I have it. Oh, where you can find it. I guess I'll have to show you that another time. But it is in color, um, shiny paper. And then I stamped right on it in two different greens. This is pear, pizzazz, and then the new green, the parakeet party. And so then you can, j I just die cut it out. But it does have that glimmer then. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. But that's a real glimmery look. I have a plain white layer. And then this is just that uh, some more of the designer series paper there and I put some gems on there now this one is um, that other little one that I showed you uh, that little tag tea bag look kind of a tag and then I have it on some of this um, darker green twine that we have in the new catalog and then I just have a little strip down there so that is the fifth color um, using all of those card bases from that set that is part of the suite of products that you will see in that new catalog, the Tea Boutique set. Um, I was doing other things at the same time. You know, I've been playing th with this a lot. Uh, this is a thank you card that kind of just swings open to the right here. Um, and I love that paper. It's so pretty. Then I have this here. It says, I just can't thank you enough. And then uh, I did emboss just this right half of it with our uh, gingham embossing folder. I don't know if you can see that, kind of. It just adds a little more interest to it, more texture. This is the outline teacup. It's All it does is kind of outline it, so that's another different use of that. Um, another thing I did here was I had taken some masking paper. We're going to have some masking paper in our in that new catalog and you put that down I die cut it out and then I just spritzed some different colors on here and I don't know if you can see the shimmeriness to it there's a little shimmer on there here's another layer of the designer series paper in the background kind of that tone on tone again the I didn't do anything on the inside yet but this is just that die cut mask and then just really a simple little note card this is something I tried and it was I have a big, huge round die, nesting die, so if you don't have that, we don't sell them right now either. So I kind of cheated with that, but um, I just wanted you to see that I did a gatefold card, but I did the, a circle, and I didn't have it cut on the edges. I left the outside hanging over the, the folded paper, and then that way it made this. Isn't that fun? It made a gatefold that's round, which I love. We have these doilies that, like this one is the gray, but on the back side of our colored doilies, they're just white. So that I thought looked really nice with <clears throat> this blue. And I had also 
um, heat or clear embossed. It, I'll try to see if I can show that to you. Can you see that it's shiny? And that's just because there's clear embossing powder melted onto the outside top of it. Um, and that makes it have that shininess. And then here's some more of the in color glimmer paper I was telling you about. It has that shininess, but it doesn't flake off. It doesn't like leave glitter all over the place. It doesn't come off, but it is kind of an ombre um, color to it. So let's get together soon. I love how that one came out. And now I need your help. I need your help um, deciding. Okay, so I made a sampler, they call it. I might have to go back out a little bit. All right, this is like a sampler. It's 12 by 12. And you have these different size panels on there. And it just kind of showcases the different patterns of paper. It showcases your stamps, your whatever you want to use. But I think it needs a little more. Now, I did this Dahlia fold on one of my previous videos. So you can go back and see that. But the rest of it is just pretty similar to what I've been showing you. Um, I will probably put something little in the middle of the Dahlia. But I need more. I need some kind of... Um, words on here, Bible verses, or a little, I need something. So if anybody has any ideas on what to put on here for words, um, and then I'll be able to put that in my 12 by 12 frame and have that up for a while. Um, I just thought that was kind of a fun use too. These are good ways to display if you have a pack of paper that you really like. Um, and this one is very shimmery on that panel. And I did that shimmery part, um, the heat embossed, clear embossed on the greenery there. Um, some of these, these two, I didn't really have anything going on there. You can see the glimmeriness of that one. I'm trying to show it anyways. Kind of shows. And this one as well. So um, let me know if you have any ideas of what I should have on here for words and for sentiments. Um, we did it. That was way too long. I apologize. That was really long, but I'll get better. I didn't, you know, I had so much to show you and tell you about the new catalog and the in colors and birthday cards and technique cards that I don't normally have that much. So forgive me for having it be so long. Um, have a great night, great weekend, great week, wherever you are and take care. Keep in touch. All right. Have a good night. Thanks for joining. Share this please. With others, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hang, Go check out Keep In Touch Crafts on Facebook. And we're going to keep the ball rolling. Let me see your ideas, too. I'd be happy to post other people's tips and tricks and um, 